Hello everybody, Will here, and welcome back to another episode of Sprocket. So, I ran a poll uh, for this video based on what tank you guys are wanting through the Communities tab. Uh, and I'll probably go back to this again as it's been really well received. I received about 75 votes and then I called it uh, for the, you know, final, final answer. And the winner of that poll was by about double the votes of any other entry uh, a french post capitulation tank and that's a really interesting topic actually because obviously france didn't build any actual tanks post capitulation so we're going into a bit of a uh, a bit of a gray area where nothing really existed so i kind of want to find almost a middle ground between tanks that you'd see in the 1950s like the amx 13 and the sub you know um Lorraine 40T, and then tanks from the 1930s like the Samur S35 and the Shah B1. So it's going to be interesting. I'm going to try and do something along those lines. I don't really know yet. Uh, I'm just going to play around until it feels vaguely French. Uh, so without any further ado, let's see what I can come up with. Hello and welcome to the Buildy Bit, as I have uh, so lovingly called it. And yeah, the design of this one, um, I kind of was a little bit freeform. Um, not a huge amount of tanks really exist from this time frame, and a lot of the ones that do are very much, uh, you know, suggested like, Ooh, what if we did this? And uh, but you know, you can you've got to take all of those kind of designs with a grain of salt. So I tried to basically design the hull as as like a, a f continuation of like the Samoa or like other early war French you know bunker tanks that the they were surprisingly good so I wouldn't actually imagine they'd change too much about them uh, it's just that tactics were letting them down, as you can see, struggling very much to place the um, stowages on the side of the tank here. It just did not want me <laughs> to snap it to the right orientation. I tried various different things and eventually we got there. Um, and I, I didn't want to touch them again with a 10 foot barge pole in case that that happened again. Um, and what I found is that this thing kind of almost looks Italian in the end, like slightly, um, which I don't think is too far off from what you'd expect from like a like a French tank of this era, uh, both a little bit uh, weird, uh, funky, and, uh, and generally not conventional is probably the best way to put it. Uh, but yeah, it's got a pretty damn big gun. Uh, it started off with an 85, later on in the video I, I downgraded to a 76 in return for more penetration, and because of the era and the scale of this gun, I did that thing with the springs again, uh, just because I just think it's cool. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I really like how it looks, and uh, for the most part this is the general shape that uh, we stick with for the rest of the video here. Um, there's a couple of adjustments and obviously I've yet to place exhausts and finer details like, uh, you know, crew consumables, is that is that the word? Entrenching tools and that lot. Uh, here's just changing the armor, so very little on this tank is the general theme. Armor is uh, not something that comes freely on this vehicle. Um, but despite that, despite the lack of armor, it, it's pretty heavy, actually. Um, it, it's definitely in medium tank territory, um, potentially reaching over towards the heavier side of medium. I wouldn't say it's close to being a heavy. It, it's, it's probably too mobile and, and like about five tons too light to be considered a heavy tank, and then the armor definitely is is not heavy tank armor, as you as you will shortly see. But um, definitely on on the slightly heavier side for a, a medium tank that we can only assume was around 1940 to 1942, based on the uh, early war uh, designation, or you could consider that earlier war, as in like the 1939, 19. Uh, you know, first half of 1940 with like the Panzer IIs and the Panzer threes, but I, I consider it a little bit later because that those tank designs were normally into War Ones that were just still getting used. But anyway, I'll, I'll stop rambling on now because uh, <laughs> we're ready to go back to the normal video. <laughs> a 
Okay. Um, so we've got something a little bit weird here. Uh, it's kind of got uh, almost a Soviet 85 millimeter uh, mounted on it because I could fit it and I figured, why the hell not? Uh, very little armor, actually. Um, only about 50 millimeters on the front because I just thought with the gun and the mobility as good as it is, um, you know, 16 liter V10 in here, uh, it gets up to some pretty decent speeds. I figured... Having a lot of armor as well would make it just a little bit boring <laughs> to take on the objectives with. So, I, I, you know, I had to bring it down a peg. I could have put some more armor on, uh, but I, I decided not to. In return, I gave it a bit more penetration. So we got 120 millimeters of penetration for an early war tank, which is really good. Um, not the craziest muzzle velocity in the world, but certainly not bad. Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll see how it does. Um, yeah, I, I kind of, I like how this thing looks. I don't think it's the best looking tank I've ever made. Uh, and I'm not 100% it's the most French looking. Uh, but I feel like maybe the paint job is doing it for me. Because for some reason I always picture French tanks as blue. But it feels quite French. And we've gone through the front of that. But it's not killed it. Let's see if we can finish it off. Uh oh. That's not a good sign. I think we're the only one left. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, that's interesting, that. Because this gun is massive. I really did think we'd be going through uh, quite easily and killing in one shot. But it doesn't seem to want to. Let's see if the APHE works any better. Um, and maybe we'll just close the distance a little bit since we have the mobility to do so. Um... I don't even know what the gun depression is like on this thing. I didn't really look, but I'd imagine it's pretty good. Uh, so we've got someone cresting here. It's the H H2 rotors. Cannot see it through the smoke. And we've shot low. Uh, oh, no. Okay, there goes my tank. Um, that's either a Man of War or a Cromwell. And looks like it's going to be another loss, interestingly enough. Uh, yeah. Huh. Why is this not penetrating? I really feel like it should be. Perhaps I need to improve the vertical gun laying a little bit so that the AI can actually aim, because they don't seem to be returning fire on the enemies at all. Um, it's really strange to me that this isn't penetrating, because I've had weaker guns go, go through no problem. And yet these really powerful guns are struggling a lot to go through anything. So that's that's strange. That sure is strange. I'm going to try get into this ridge line ahead here. I'm getting shot at from the right. Yeah, okay, that's not gone well. Uh, this guy might be able to make it. Just if I can get myself in a position where I'm not getting shot at quite so much, I might be able to pick off the targets one by one as they crest the hill. That's the hope. Now we've got something big coming here. I think it's a man of war. We should be able to go through the front of this. I've done it in tanks with less penetration, but the gun laying is really poor, and it's just not gone through. That's so strange. That's really strange. I don't know what's going on there. We should be able to go through that, no problem. Why won't it... I... That's so weird. Okay, so we've got a 76mm rather than an 85 now. Um... Once again, sticking with the fairly common Russian calibers. Uh, and we have a little bit more penetration. 125 rather than 120. Uh, which isn't crazy amounts more. But, oh god. There's nowhere to hide. That's kind of the problem I'm running into here. And I'm just not going through. Oh, my. Okay, I've reloaded. Because this just feels wrong. This feels like a bug. Because I... I should be able to penetrate these things, no problem. Absolutely with ease. I've penetrated the Man of War with a 100 mil of pen before through the front, no issue. And now I've got 125 and it won't go through anywhere. Even on lighter tanks like the Cromwell, which is always easy to penetrate. There we go, that's gone through. Let's move up to this ridge line. 
And now, the lack of armor is expected on this tank. Uh, I really didn't put anything on it. So, not surprised if we do get penetrated. The aim is to not be. <laughs> There we go. There goes the man of war. We got H2 in front of us. Got to take it out. ASAP. There we go. He's gone. A uh, couple more coming over the hill here. Got to wait for the reload and the gun laying, but this guy should be no problem. Okay, it seems that we've bounced off that one. We've got two seconds until this one's hopefully dead. God, they reload fast. Okay, he's on fire. I think he'll be out of the fight soon. I'm going to focus my efforts on this other one. He's gone. See if we can just get a little bit more cover on my tank here and finish this guy off. Oh, this one's a sturdy boy. He won't go down without a fight. There we go. He's finally gone. Okay. I think there was something wrong with my game because I reloaded and suddenly this gun goes through everything as expected. So, I don't know. That's really strange. Um... I don't know what happened there. Um, but yeah, okay. Seems a little bit more successful now. So we'll try this thing out on Silent Border. Okay, so we get a couple more this time, and I'm hoping that the AI um, takes out the anti-tanks for me so half this battle isn't spent with me going, I can't see the anti-tank guns, um, which is quite common with uh, with these old uh, nighttime scenarios. Yeah, there we go. They seem to be seem to be on it. Yeah, there we go. One's down. We got another one on the right here somewhere. Don't want to run into my ally. The question is, will they get it? Uh, somewhere over here. Obviously there. I think it's there. I'm wobbling like crazy. What's going on there? What is happening today, man? <laughs> okay. Anti-tank gun. Dead. Gun. Wobbling. <laughs> Situation. Under control. Uh, there's the next anti-tank gun. Not wobbling so much anymore, which is always beneficial. Uh, see if we can get our allies to follow me over this uh, little bridge in the middle, because they seem to be struggling to get up the hill at the moment. Ooh, nearly fell off there. I'd imagine the AI will if they get there. Um, and with 125, I wouldn't be too surprised if we can actually go through the front of the Allen. Um, I'm certainly going to give it a go. Because uh, why the hell not, frankly? <laughs> um, so, yeah. Wobbly tanks aside, let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. Oh, it's wobbling. <laughs> it's It really is. Really is wobbly, isn't it? Why is it so wobbly? Okay, right through the front of the Allen, as predicted. No problem with this gun after the restart. Very buggy game <laughs> today. <laughs> problem after problem after problem kept showing its face. But uh, here we are. And uh, we have managed to to build ourselves a post-capitulation French tank and win the game. Well, win the uh, win all of the scenarios for early war with it. So yeah, as wobbly as it was, thank you for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and a subscribe, and I will see you in the future. Goodbye. Yeah!